the things I wanted to talk to you about, Eric, you, we had talked off air and I thought it was very interesting and I want, I wanted to bring it up. You had told me about the air force base in San Antonio. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. Do you want to touch on that? Yeah, sure. I mean, people are probably familiar with the Edwards air force base, uh, encounters that took place in 1976 uh it was a series of encounters that took place off of quintana road which is right across the railroad tracks from edwards air force base which is a now defunct military uh base and um for me these are some of the most incredible see it's a series of encounters with so much data that it, unfortunately no one is or not many people outside of texas are aware of it would happen for a you know, several month period uh, we had uh, ed oliveri see this thing in uh, i believe it was like september 1st he's getting ready for work and his dog's going crazy his dog lick him and uh, he goes into the backyard and he sees laying down this thing uh, a big hairy thing and then uh, the train whistle blows and he sees this thing jump up and start running in the opposite direction towards a wooded area. And he's described it as, uh, a, he literally tells the San Antonio light newspaper, it looked like a Bigfoot. He said it was covered in hair, but it was running awkwardly. It was running really weird. And uh, that's just an, a one of a series of encounters. I believe before then, their next door neighbor, Mrs. Rose Medina, said that she had seen a smaller one sitting on her back porch uh the night before or like the week before and she 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 heard the dogs barking in the direction of her house so she gets up and goes to the bathroom and looks out the window and in the back she sees this thing hunched over sitting down on her back steps she describes it as like the body of a five-year-old kid covered in hair and uh, she taps on the window and when she taps on the window this thing jumps up and starts running on two feet uh, in front of her house and uh west i believe into the darkness so that's two sightings right there. And, and the sister of Ed Oliveira, Yolanda, actually was able to find footprints uh, in the area. And they're, they're about 13 inches, about two inches deep in mud. And uh, there was just so much stuff going on there, animal mutilations. There was a manhole cover that had been lifted off of one of the sewers there. And you're thinking a cast iron manhole cover, that's got to be at least 150, 175 pounds. And you typically need a special tool to get that off. So no one saw what did this, but whatever did had to have some really amazing strength in their fingers just to be able to pry this thing off. So we had so much data here, but uh, you know, like I said, unfortunately people outside of Texas don't really know that. And the part that I'm about to tell you, virtually no one knows this. Uh, so when I made my research public about, you know, hey, I'm interested in the area, the youngest brother of the Oliveri family, which is the family that was investigating these encounters, contacted me. He's a, a older man now, uh, Mr. William Oliveri. I hope he's okay with me saying that. <laughs> Mr. William Oliveri reached out to me and he told me about as kids, they would follow the creek trails that were uh, not far from the Edwards Air Force Base there. And they would end up at this place that was an ape enclosure. Okay, they would see these all these various types of apes uh, from the creek where they were playing as kids. They would kind of go and sneak up and see who could get the closest. So he described seeing this, and I did a little bit of research on the area. So uh, that area is actually what's known as Tom Slick Park. And if you know anything about <laughs> Bigfoot or Yeti encounters, Tom Slick was the guy who pretty much uh, made the Yeti famous. He made the research for the Yeti uh, famous. Pretty, uh, you know, That's how everybody usually knows him. He, he funded the first Yeti expedition and came back with the Yeti paw, I believe, from Nepal or something like that. Uh, but when, when I looked into the actual establishment, so that place is actually the Texas Biomedical Research Facility. Now it's called the South, uh, the Southwest Ape Research Facility that was owned by Tom Slick. Okay. <laughs> he was the one who founded this biomedical research facility in San Antonio, Texas. Now a guy looking for Bigfoot and Yetis finds an ape research facility. There's either two things going on there. He's either getting ready for when he does have some type of Bigfoot body or something like that, or he already has it. Yeah. Those are the two things. And people see, you know, it's so strange that if you follow the creek, you end up there uh, right along the creek where these people are having these Bigfoot sightings. I mean, that's just, that's really 
insane when you think about it. And no one knows about this, or they know about the facility, but really no one knows it. That was Tom Slick's facility that he started. Yeah, and when you say uh, Edwards, you're talking about Edwards Air Force unit? Right. The unit, yeah, because the base is actually in California. No, yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the unit, this is yeah. actually a unit that's, yeah. that's it, and it's over there, yeah. So, so that, that's, that's weird, man. Like really weird. I, I, I've ne until me and you talked about that and I've talked to Ken Gerhardt, I'm sure he probably knows, but he's never mentioned that to me. And, you know, I just, that you were the first one that actually said that. Yeah. I mean, when you, I, I was, I was unaware of this, this ape enclosure and he told me about it and I was like, what the heck is this? And then I, I looked at it and you can zoom in on Google maps and see it. And there is a, it's a, it's an ape enclosure facility. And I, I thought that was strange. I was like, oh, maybe just, maybe a guy has some exotic animals out there or something. But no, it's an actual facility where they do all types of research on apes. They do uh, hormone research. They do genetic research. They pretty much do all types of genetic testing on these apes out there. Uh, and you can look at it, do the research yourself. It was owned and created by Tom Slick. So like I said, he was, he was on another level with his research that uh, the public really might never know the the full extent of what he was doing. And and that area, it, it, I believe, it's adjacent to like the it's Kelly. It used to be Kelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah Kelly, it was Kelly. But yeah, now it's yeah. called like Kelly Airfield or something. It's like Joint Base or something. I don't know. But I know Lackland's where the Air Force goes to. My sister was in the Air Force, so was her husband. And, Mm -hmm. I know that's where you go to do your training. And uh, <clears throat> one of my wife's friends, they were, they, they went to Lackland. And <clears throat> when he came down to visit, we were in San Antonio. And I know that there, you, there was, there was Kelly, there was Randolph and Lackland. And I think that yeah, they, it was a, it was a big military city back in the day. Mm -hmm. Not Fort so much Sam. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why they had, what's his name? Uh, Tim Robinson. They called him the general, right? They, mm -hmm. Yeah. David Robinson, the admiral. Oh, David Robinson. Yeah. But he yeah, was admiral, in, he was admiral, in the yeah. Navy. But th there's no Navy bases, but there's lots of Air Force, and, and then right, there's, of right. course, there's Fort Sam. But I, I was I was curious about some of the reports. Now, have you looked into the reports between San Antonio and Kerrville? Have you looked at any of that? Because there's a bunch of stuff in that. Yeah, area. I've heard of uh, of Kerrville. Actually, yeah, there's a couple of huge mountains out there that I've I've heard of stuff going on, and I, I'm not sure if it's Kerrville, but I know it's in that area. There's a woman that uh, apparently she's had some type of uh, uh, habituation going on there uh, that she claims she's had for years, and I want to say that's in the Kerrville area too. I could be wrong, but it was it was quite a while back when I heard about that. But but yeah, I'm, no, I'm, that place is no stranger to again strange accounts of of weird things going out there. Going west of San Antonio, yeah. I'll tell you something weird, and I'm sure the audience may have heard this before. I don't know if we've talked about it on the podcast though, Anthony. We talked about it on the live stream. But remember, we had somebody who claimed that their uncle was a werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> From, and it sounds funny when you say it like that. It's like, oh, his uncle was a werewolf. But this yeah. guy was very adamant. And it kind of jives with something that I was told years ago. There was a guy that we were friends with who moved to Finland. His family was actually Finnish. But he had told us that years ago, him and well, his friends, he was there, but his friends had done a conjuring oh. ceremony. And he told me and my brother this and, and my friend Scorpion. He told us this and we were out there visiting and he was the, he was the, I guess, curator of the museum at that time. Yeah. And he told us that they conjured up a demonic entity or something like that. And th his friend kind of matched the description of this guy that was telling us that, that his uncle was a werewolf. And I was like, dude. And he said that he saw something come up out of the ground and kind of go through someone's back and it looked wolf-like. And when the guy stood up, it was kind of like bonding with him. And he's like, think of venom. Wow. Yeah. And when he was telling us this and we were just like, what? Now you got it. Let's put it in perspective. We were, we were at a bar and we're like having a few drinks. And then we went back to his place, which is like a, a really nice spread is like several acres. Uh, and this was, man, I'd say probably, probably 2010 or something like that. And then he was telling us this and I was just going like, is this guy for real? Like, I just couldn't, you know, I couldn't wrap my mind around what he was saying. And he was, or I think it was 2000, oh, I was longer than it was 2006. And so we went out there and, and then of course I think he moved a few years later and, and went out there a couple times and met this guy. 
and uh, he was in a black metal band, you know, like into in like black metal, like the goth, you know, evil and darkness type stuff, whatever. He knew it was all just, you know, facade. But he said, dude, his friends took it seriously. Yeah. And he said that his friend like literally started living out in the woods. And then I get a report from this lady. She's an African-American lady who claims she saw this werewolf. She didn't say dog man, Bigfoot, nothing. She said it was a werewolf. <laughs> she was like very adamant. And she said it ran right across the road. Her granddaughter is the one that told her about my show. And uh, she's an elderly woman. And, but she said this was years ago when she was younger. And she said, that, and I talked to her not too long ago about this too, because I was thinking about doing some research out there when, when I had Christopher Garitano. He's a filmmaker like you, you know, you do documentaries. And I was thinking of like people we could get together to go and interview out in the hill country. Right. And so I thought it'd be interesting, you know, to, to interview her, but she's, she's getting up there in age. I think she's like 79 now. Okay. But she said that this thing ran across the road and when it did, it just like kind of, it, it was like, it, it, it was unnaturally fast. Mm. And she said that it just raked its hand across the front of her car and she had a Ford Taurus at that time. And she said that it just, it just put a big old scratch over the top of it, like four fingered scratch. And she said it was like, almost like taunting her. Wow. And I was just like blown away by that account. But then there were other stories we had gotten from there. And so there was, we were talking about it in the live stream. I believe it was a live stream, wasn't it? Yeah. And this guy, he just pipes up and says, that was my uncle. And we were like, wow. what? And so <laughs> then he describes a Hispanic guy. And then when I talked to my friend that, that had, we'll call him D, I don't want to say his full name because I don't, I don't have permission, but he was very adamant that, the, that this guy went feral and was out in the woods and could shape shift. Like he really, and I was like, D, come on, man. Do you really believe this? He goes, yes, I do. And so my brother and me looked at each other. We shrugged our shoulders because we were, back then we were into this stuff. And we were just driving around and going and interviewing people, you know, going on location, interview people. And he wanted us to go out into the woods where the, he had last seen the guy. And I'm like, uh-uh, no, I'm good. <laughs> and, and I had seen one, you know, when I was 15. I'm like, I don't need to see it to believe. I know that it's there. I've gotten tons of Bigfoot and Dogman reports at that point. And so I was like, no, no, I'm good. I don't want to go out into the woods. Because not only that, could he not be a werewolf, but like, what if he's crazy? He's deranged. What yeah, if he's living yeah. out there feral and he's eating his, his, his socks or something? You know, I don't know what this <laughs> guy's doing, you know? And you know, you know what I'm saying, Eric? So you go out there and then the guy's like, he's out there, oh, oh, what's up? And he attacks you, you know? A werewolf is just half of what you got to worry about. Like, <laughs> guy could be out there on meth or whatever. Right. Yeah, no, it, it's know? crazy because you talked about a conjuring. And I think we touched about it a little bit as far as, you know, some of the more spiritual stuff here in the Brushy Creek that I, I documented in the, in the documentary. But um, there was uh, one message that I got when I was making my research public from a realtor who's actually good friends with my, my tia, my aunt. And uh, I have I have a message to today where he talks about his wife was on one of the Brushy Creek trails in 2011, the same time I had my experience when we had the drought. They were in the creek, uh, cloaked people with candles around dusk doing some type of ritual. Oh, my and gosh. And I have these messages. And I told the guy, well, let me interview your wife. She's like, nope, she's not into it. She doesn't want to do it or whatever. Uh, and then in 2021... October 2021, we have a case of a girl, a teenage girl that went missing. Uh, she was last seen on the Brushy Creek Road. And what was the last thing she was carrying? She was carrying a blue suitcase and an antique Victorian doll. Uh. Those were the only things she was carrying. So what are you doing out there with that stuff? Uh, you know, I don't think you're going fishing with, with that supplies there. Yeah, that's so weird, dude. I, th I think one of the things that, that uh, we've talked about before, I don't know if we've talked about it on the show, and maybe you could 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 touch on this a little bit. Um, this was at one time, and I think, it, how old are you, Eric? Because I don't know exactly. I'm uh, 35. 35. Yeah. So you, you're a little older than Anthony. You guys may not okay. remember, but Anthony, I know you know hmm. what I'm going to say about our hometown. Not just Taylor, but Williamson County Williamson in particular County, was yeah. was like a, a kind of a central hub of the uh, satanic ban satanic panic back in the eighties and nineties, mm -hmm. especially. And I know Taylor like made the news. Yeah, and you know that that old building off of Second uh, and Main, right there by the right there by the bridge. It used to oh, be a bank. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, at the back of that bank is is this alley, and it, it used to be open, but the, it, it's closed off now. But I remember one time, me and my cousin, we 
we went down to the back of that bank. We went down that alley. Guess, Nathan? Yeah, yeah, with Nathan. <laughs> it's the bad And one. like the whole back, uh, the rear of the bank, it's uh, of that old building, the wall, like a good portion of the wall was just gone. So you could see right into it and, and, and you could you could walk right into it. I mean, of course, it, it, would, be, it would be trespassing, but right. we were born teenagers in Taylor. So of course we, we went in and you go in there and like there's all these like pentagrams and 666 and hell satan spray painted all like all yeah, over the place yeah. and yeah and no, i was actually born in taylor uh so i know about some of the things that happened there and for whatever reason taylor has a really weird i'll call it a phenomena of dead people showing up in really weird places mm -hmm. <laughs> like in the back of truck beds in cars uh, in the railroad carts the railroad fields, carts yeah. I mean, you hear about just bodies that pop up in really random places in Taylor. I have no idea what that's about. Uh, but like I told you, the one that was in 2021 in the field, uh, apparently, from what I understand, from what I heard in my own ears, the guy said that murder, and he said there was another state involved with that. That was almost two years ago. We haven't heard. It's October's coming up. It's going to be two years in October. We haven't heard anything about that. That's no progress. So weird. Yeah. So we have no idea who that person was, how he died, anything like that. And that's kind of a common theme in certain areas of the Brushy Creek. In 2017, there was a kid who actually live streamed uh, his discovery of a uh, human body that he found in an area where they found uh, two other people that were dead there in the Brushy Creek. One of the ones that I mentioned that uh, that was five, his car was five miles away. But yeah, I mean, it's for whatever reason, this creek area has a lot of in taylor as well has a lot of weird bodies popping up what ancient do you, and new what do you think that is like i mean like just if, if you had to postulate like theory i don't know dude like, i don't know i mean i the native americans obviously thought this place was special because they they were here for so long and they buried their they're uh, important people in the area about 50 yards away from my childhood house where I grew up in 2014, when they were building a, a park right behind there, they actually found three sets of native Americans uh, that were buried at 50 yards away from where we would play soccer in our backyard. And uh, to this day, we have no idea how old those people were, who they were. We know there were at least three of them. Uh, unfortunately, Texas has a really weird law that states that if a construction company finds the bones, they're able to hire their own uh, consultant to say what they want to do with it. Yeah. yeah. So obviously they're going to get someone that's in their favor. So all we know is those bones, some of those bones were taken to Texas state. And I've been trying to get some information on that, at least the date, because who knows, we might have another Leanderthal woman, you know, an ancient set of bones here, but I have, I've been coming up dry on that one. Well, didn't Texas state, they, they bought little Arkansas out there. Oh, I'm not sure. And, and, yeah. yeah, right outside of the, and then all of a sudden they had money to do all these renovations. <laughs> I, I mean, mm. I'm not saying anything about, I'm just, I, the rumor that I was told was that because there was supposedly the Confederate treasury was buried out there, wow. out the devil's backbone. And then they, the, all of a sudden, little Arkansas, they, they took it and you can't, you can't go and camp there anymore. It's just thick woods on the, I think, southeastern side of the devil's backbone. And there have been people who found Spanish coins, like, oh, yeah. you know, you know, Spaniard coins yeah. and uh, the, the Confederate treasury is supposedly buried out there. Now, I know that they did a show on Unsolved Mysteries about the Devil's Backbone and Burt Wall. He wrote the books about it and everything. And, and it was it's a very, very haunted place. You get yeah. I got stories of like, what was it? The Confederate soldiers, people from uh, I, th I think don't quote me on this because it's one of the episodes we did. But I think they're from Wisconsin or something. And those people mm -hmm. saw two or three confederates coming up the hill and they looked so surprised like yeah like david weatherly said that he thinks that maybe they were seeing them like they were seeing like it was a portal or something maybe they had gone through yeah like the soldiers were just as surprised to yeah see they them. looked surprised they almost got hit by a car and they, they were just like were those reenactors and his wife was the, the 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 husband told the wife he was like i don't think so <laughs> they're gonna be walking around at one in the morning they're coming back from a dinner party and they're staying out at an Airbnb out there, and they see these Confederate soldiers come up the hill, and they're like, I don't think that those are reenactors walking around in the pitch dark at one in the morning. And she was like, I think we just saw ghosts. And he goes, or they were time travelers or something. But people see like these 
Like one guy saw a guy walking with a musket with a coonskin hat and it looked like he was from the 1830s and he kind of waved at him and the guy stopped and kind of looked at him and waved back and looked kind of confused and shook his head. Well, I've heard of them seeing like a little Native American boy Native out there. Americans? Oh, yeah. yeah. On horseback, right. there was a guy who uh, told David Weatherly he saw a Comanche. Just the guy was on horseback. And another guy said he saw what looked like an Apache Indian just like walking alongside him. Just this, this Native guy just walking, paralleling him and... You get some weird, weird reports out there, and we have gotten so many Dogman, Bigfoot, and flying cryptids, humanoids. I mean, it's just it's shocking how much. Well, I mean, there's so much of the paranormal side, but also in the devil's backbone. I believe there was a case that happened in the 30s. I'm not sure, uh, but it was a man who pretty much axe murdered his entire family. Oh, wow. Uh, and that was, yeah, I believe, I want to say it was in the maybe 20s or 30s, but he went on a killing spree, and he killed, I believe, his his neighbor's uh, wife, he killed like his couple of his daughters and I think his wife. Uh, but this is all, yeah, it's along the devil's backbone there in that area. Uh, he just went on a killing spree and killed a bunch of people with, with an axe. Well, my brother and I and my our friend Spike and, and Loco, we were convinced. I mean, still to this day, I told you the story. Like this right, guy, yeah, I think yeah. he was a hitchhiker, a ghost. I really do. Um, it just didn't make sense. There was no other way that we could describe It's my brother. Just like when you talk about that, he gets real like he's like, that had to be a ghost. It had to be because he had this like blue pallor about him, you know, and what, what, jumping around a little bit. But r right here, uh, there's so much interesting information you have, Eric, and you are like when we started talking. I mean, we talked for a couple of hours and it was yeah. like, <laughs> you had so much information and it all started because of something you posted in a group. I'm not going to get into yeah. it, but it was like, we just started talking and it, we just clicked. And I said, man, and that's why I said, I got to talk to this guy. And yeah, so many people. A couple of weird things that uh, kind of, you know, I don't know if we should, you know, a couple of weird names you had for some things and that they were interesting and kind of set off a couple of flags in a good way, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. And was, when we started talking, weird. I was like, man, this guy, you know, and then you told me about your documentary yeah. and one thing led to another. And I was like, it was good. It was good to, to hear someone talk about what I've been talking about and what David Weatherly has right. been talking about for a long time. We've been talking about this stuff and it's like, it just kind of reinforces what, you know, I've been saying. It's just like when Aaron Deese wrote his book, Texas Dog Man Triangle, and then the documentary, the dog, the dog man triangle, the Texas Dog Man Triangle. Uh, Seth Breedlove's movie, it, it just it reinforces what I've been saying about this area, and and it's like you brought to light a lot of interesting things. One of the things we talked about, and I we we can't forget about this. You, your aunt, now she, and it, this is a connection we have because your aunt lived in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. <laughs> yeah, she did. Yeah. yeah, we that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. Uh, was actually right across the street from my grandma's house in La Frontera in Round Rock. So every time we'd go to my grandparents' house, we would see it. And her mom would tell us the story of how uh, my aunt in the 70s uh, lived in that house. They were renting that house. And that's the thing with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They were able to get that house because it was it was was nobody wanted to live there. And they, they rented it for this, the movie. And the movie was really a flop. It didn't really get famous until the eighties or nineties. Cause it was like rated X and not many people saw it. It was just kind of like a, a horror fan, you know, that real horror fans were the only ones that were seeing it. So no one really cared about that house at that time. They just knew it was a weird house. So my aunt was renting it and uh, they were there for a couple of months. And one night they were, uh, they went to bed and everything and, you know, everything was fine and normal. And then the next morning they woke up on the ground outside and that's a story that we've heard <laughs> so as kids. Weird, man. Yeah, we we've heard that since we were kids, and now they've moved the the house. I think the Kingsland, yeah, Kingsland, Kingland, Kingland, yeah, yeah. And it, and it's a restaurant. And what's crazy, my dad, my dad, and my mom both would tell me they'd be like, "You played there when you were a kid." My, you know, because your dad, yeah. my mom told me one at first. She said your dad's friend used to rent that house, mm -hmm. and where where it is now, or or where it was then at the La Frontera. That's like all, that's like the toll road. That's 35. Nowadays, it's, yeah. it's all grown yeah. up and it's all built up and it's been, yeah. there's just tons of stuff there, you know, and you don't even think mm -hmm. about it and you're, and you're literally walking right over it. Yeah. I mean, back in the day it was, it was like a house on a hill, mm -hmm. you know, 
you could see it from a good little ways away and uh, it just looked creepy. And occasionally you would see people out there uh, just kind of checking it out because it was, it was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. Mm -hmm. And uh, it never really frightened me or anything like that. I just thought it was creepy as hell. It's uh, that happened and it, it happened right there. I mean, we could see it from her house. It was crazy. Yeah. And, and so when I was a kid, I, I, I spent time in that house. I played in that house and it was like my mom and I don't, I barely remember. I remember driving out there like as a child, like a little kid. And they were like, yeah, you don't remember going out there? And I'm like, no, not really. And what's even more interesting is my, my grandmother had a job, um, working at UT. And so she got my mom and dad a part-time job working there at that time back in the seventies. And so they got to meet Tobe Hooper and all the actors and everybody. And they, and the, they got to mess with the that's chainsaw. It cool. was on the desk, yeah, so you know? Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so it was a bunch of UT students that did the right film. On. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so my, but my dad told me he had something weird happen to him there. He said he stayed the night there with his friend that was renting it at that time years ago in the seventies. And the door to the bedroom like opened up. Cause like my dad doesn't admit, he never admitted to like a lot of paranormal stuff that happened to him, which I know we, we stayed in the house when I was a kid out near Rockdale and it was definitely haunted, but my dad would never like fully cop to the things that he saw. I know he saw some things, but mom always claimed he did, but he goes, I saw the door like open. And so he said, he goes, I will say this, having spent the night there a few times, you know, he goes, and then staying there with you and your mom and you and your sister, he said, it is haunted. I can say that. He goes, there's some weird stuff there. The people that live there said it was. And so definitely doesn't surprise me that your aunt and your family ended up outside. Yeah. That and is then so right after that, they, they packed up all their stuff and they moved in with my grandparents for a little while. So, yeah. You don't, what do you think it was? Oh man, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you, you know, I, it, that place just always looked creepy. We never got that close to it because it was just. You know, we weren't allowed to, but we would always hear that story going to my grandparents' house. And I, can, I can't tell you what it was, man. It had to be something unexplainable. Yeah. It could have been. I mean, it, usually when something like that happens, it has to do with alien abduction. I never even thought about that. You know, and so it just makes me wonder. I know now going, kind of dipping into that, you, you've, you've covered so many reports of like strange uh, stuff in this area. Along the Brushy Creek thing, have you gotten reports of UFOs? I have to ask. Okay, so in my documentary, uh, I interviewed a friend of mine who uh, talks about seeing a green light follow their car uh, while they're driving on 79 towards Taylor. Uh, and I believe it was 2020, maybe 2021, we had a, uh, a phenomenon in the sky that resembled this, okay? And the astrolo astrologist, I think that's the right word. <laughs> Or astro astronomer, astronomer, astronomers, astronomer. yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, astronomer. Uh, so she looked at it, and she said, or she's on the news talking about that. She said that's a one in a million chance. She says people will go their entire lifetime without seeing that. And we have a guy who I talked to seeing the same thing. And this was caught on a door camera and huddle right over the Brushy Creek. So uh, as far as Say, you know ufo type of stuff i'm not sure if you could con would consider that Th those are just really strange phenomena that have happened in the area that aren't supposed to happen you know more than one in a million times uh, so that alone to me is really really weird uh and who knows it could be that this area just attracts that type of you know phenomena who I, you know I, i'm not really sure have you done any research like uh, south uh, like like going south of like uh, 79, like in between Taylor and like Thorndale, that area? I've been out there. Uh, I mean, I haven't really done too much out there, but I know, and it's in the uh, the uh, PFRO out there. So we had our encounters in 2017, a lot of Bigfoot activity in 2017 in my area of Round Rock. To the east of us, not I believe it's not far from Rockdale out there, uh, a guy reported seeing something cross the road and the next day he went out there with the BFRO investigator and actually casted a footprint out there. And not only that, but they have, they found an area where it looked like bedding where this thing laid down in like a, almost like a bog type of area where there was a lot of cattails and stuff like that. And that's right there. Not far from Rockdale. I don't remember the exact name of that crossing, but it's, it's not far from there. East, east of the, 
if you follow the Brushy Creek East, kind of what you're talking about. Yeah, br- and Brushy Creek continues. It goes all yeah. the way. And then you actually cross it on 79. It's right. it's Brushy Creek, I think, outside of Thorndale. Yeah. And, like, it just keeps going. It just, it's yeah. weird. Yeah, it's 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 a huge ancient river that pops up it's from a spring in the Balcones. Uh, so how deep that goes underground, I have no idea. But it flows for miles and miles and miles. And there's uh, and a I, sulfur springs right there outside of Thorndale that's that's kind of defunct now, but people used to come from all over and they would bathe in it and they and they thought that the water would would heal them, and it is from Brushy Creek and it's literally the Brushy Creek Bar where my my cousin Muff used to just all the time. I know it's a weird name, but that was his name and his nickname. But but uh, he, he Muff would always be out there, uh, you know drinking like all the time and he, that brushy creek right there people would come and they would want to go out there to take pictures of the spring the spring i, st- I believe is still there and it's an offshoot of it it comes out of the earth from under the yeah. underground yeah but the, the, they used to have like cement uh, pit or people would go and they would actually pay the owner it's right off of 79 and they would they would go and they would sit in that and it would supposedly heal skin ailments and all kinds of wow, other I, rheumatism. I heard about that. That's, I mean, right behind our house, before you get to the Brushy Creek, when you'd, you'd, we'd walk there to go fishing, you would run into a spring. And that spring was freaking gorgeous. My my brother saw a gigantic soft-shell turtle there. And, I mean, to see a soft-shell turtle in Texas, that's pretty rare. And this one was, from what he described, was pretty big. And we always joke saying that was like the fountain of youth, you know, whatever, because the water was just crystal clear coming out of the ground, and it just pulled up right there. Beautiful area. But, uh, I mean, that's all over. We got, like I said, the, the aquifers and the springs due to the the uh, fault line here. It's, it's Yeah, they just pop up. Like the blue hole? Blue hole, yeah, gorgeous. A lot of people have dove into that. uh, Chris Washington, a friend of mine from when I was a kid, he dove in, he never came back out. I mean, it was. Yeah, that happened. I think they outlawed the jumping off the cliffs out there now. What is the other one called? Jacob's Hole? Jacob's Hole. Yeah, Jacob Hole. So actually, there's been quite a few people that have lost their lives trying to get to the bottom of it. And now they Uh, say it's haunted too. I mean, and I don't know if it's. Yeah, I don't doubt that at all because I've had people tell me that they were out there. Uh, some people were out there one late spring, like in May or something, and they claimed to have seen someone come out of the water. Like, and it was it was weird. It was a couple that told me this ghost story in the club I used to run, and uh, this thing just came up. Well, I'd say thing. I don't know what it was. It was a person. It looked like a person, but when it came up out of the water, it just vanished. Mm. And it looked like somebody. You know how the the way that they would wear their bathing suits were like full bodied like clothing right. yeah, like okay, from the yeah. yeah from the twenties or ah, whatever. Wow, that's cool. And, and and they thought that it, that's then I I they said what do you think it was? If I had to put my you know honest opinion on them, maybe somebody that drowned back in the twenties or something. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I, like I said, I know there was a couple of accounts of of these world class divers. I, I want to say it was two of them that decided to do like a midnight. Uh, dive down there and uh from what i understand they never recovered the body yeah they're still there people yeah they're still there yeah yeah and all these springs that they, that pop up and you got to think if if there's all these caves and there's all this water i mean there's going to be something that's going to live down there you would think so you would think so yeah, and, i uh, think that that's going to be the the next frontier people are going right. to start thinking because i'm one of those people and i don't know if i told you this but i believe in the inner earth I mean, I really believe hardcore in the inner earth. I believe that that's where a lot of this stuff is. I believe that's where a lot of answers are. And and like, and I know that people call it the Bulgarian uh, Roswell, Mm. where they were looking for Adam. Okay, I've heard of that. Yeah, Yeah, I remember hearing about that. They supposedly recovered a 25 foot tall humanoid. It was like in suspended animation or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I've and, heard and, of that. Yeah. I mean, that kind of, to be honest with you, when I heard that story, it sounded so familiar to what I would consider happening here, you know, but uh, I don't know, man, to be honest with you, I don't know. And there's a lot of data for that one too. Like the, the Bulgarian, uh, it was called like Operation Silver Sun or something like that. So they, they used the cover of them extracting, uh, what they thought was like hidden gold or something like that. Mm -hmm. They used that as their cover, but they were actually in search of this, this thing that was rumored to be down there. And, uh, it just sounded so familiar to kind of like what's going on in in the area here. I don't know. If you, if you were to stop and look at how many different, if you looked on a map at how many different places and openings there are, like Mm -hmm. you said, with the caves and everything else, Going from Williamson, Milam County, Williamson County, Travis yeah. County, all these places, and you follow, especially following Brushy Creek, 
mm-hmm. just following Brushy Creek, which was actually, like you said, a spring-fed river right. at one time. One of the only natural rivers in Texas, but now it's just a creek. It's kind of dried up for the most part in, in a lot of places, and it depends on the rainfall. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. But but Cato Lake is the only natural lake, mm-hmm. right? And then there's all these, like, rivers, right? And that's one of the only natural, like, uh, uh, what do you call it, like, creeks that's still, like, it's it, but because it, it was a river. And now it's kind of just become a, a creek or whatever. And, and the San Gabriel River runs parallel at certain points, right? So if, if you look at, at, the, at the, the map, if you look at a map and you see all these different areas that it runs through and you were to follow that, and there are so many openings within like a mile. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, from, from, of that creek. I, I do believe that, that there's, there's a, a waterway underneath there. I mean, I'm almost positive that it, that it's it there flows. Has be, yeah. It has to be that it flows it like a river. Yeah. And if if you were a denizen of the inner earth, this is just a theory of mine. You would just be living along that river, and when you pop up, you're going to be there. You know, like you said about this this beast of the of the brushy creek, and you know, people can go and watch the documentary and, and see for themselves what you're talking about. But this creature or creatures can live along that creek i mean for forever because there's right. water underneath there and yeah, if the, absolutely the, the and if the the sulfuride compounds or whatever it is it, it fits to be believed that it heals and some people claim that it could extend your life back in the day of course that that hasn't been they haven't used that since like the 70s but imagine if these creatures like you know if they live these like long lifespans people say that that you know the inner earth I've heard all kinds of theories. They could literally live really long time if they're drinking really clean, pure, right. like like water, and the, everything is more pristine and clean. You know what I mean? Like than we are. And right. I've thought no, about I mean, that. It's, it's scary because well, not scary, but when you think about it, like we've had sightings in this area since the 1800s. You know, mm-hmm. and we're having them as as recent as 2022. So it. Whatever is here has been here for a really long time, taking advantage of these underground workings, this underground network. In a way, we haven't figured out yet. Uh, I mean, we know they're there. We we have, you know, a Texas per Lunkin group saying there's over 3,000, possibly over 3,000 undiscovered caves in the area, caves that are big enough for deer to walk out of. I mean, that's just kind of, you would have to think if it's something, it's it's been down there for a really long time and it's, it, it's kind of made this place home. You know? Yeah. Like it's, I mean, it's in your weird. opinion, Eric, do, do you, do you agree? Like that, like if you're, if you were out to, if you were to go out looking for these things, the place you would have to go is in the earth. I mean, do you, I would, yeah, I mean, I would, I would think so. Yeah. I, honestly, I would think so. I mean, everything we've heard, like the, the bear man cave hanging out in the cave over there, the hairy man road is full of caves. I mean, you would just have to associate the it with goat that. man, goat man. I mean, you, you just have to kind of, it's it's almost synonymous when you talk about Bigfoot. You have to in the area, or at least you have to mention the caves that they go hand in hand. I would think. Yeah, yeah, and, and so there's many. all this debate about whether it's a physical thing or a metaphysical thing or a spiritual thing. And some people get I, I get on both sides. I get people get really mad at me because they're like, "Well, you know, you you said it was metaphysical. Then why do you say that these things could live in the cave?" And I get these emails that are angrily, t- you know, chastising me. And then I get people telling me. Well, you said that these things are of a spiritual nature, and, and or you said these things are physical. You know, I, I think it's both, but I think that that being in the earth and it, it lends to a different type of existence. That's a good point. That's I mean, point. and I really think that, like what you saw, what, what it's it's funny because what you didn't see is really yeah, yeah. the operative. I should you have know. seen it. I should have seen it, and that's the thing that gets me to this day. Like we should have seen it. I mean, it was. It was dark, but it wasn't pitch black. It was it was getting dark. So I mean, I, I to this day I have no. It had to be within ten feet of us. Oh my gosh! But we couldn't see it. Like I don't understand. Then everyone that I've talked to, except for maybe two people, have said the same thing. It was so close, but I couldn't see it. We never saw what it was. If so you had know. to, if you had to make a decision though, like somebody said, look, you have to be. For me, I'm open to all the possibilities. And I I believe that there's more than one thing going on. And I know that there are people who claim that there's a cloaking element, but 
what that is and how that works, I have no idea. Like Anthony, earlier we were talking about Roland. My wife saw a Bigfoot. I saw, kind of funny how you said about the cow. I yeah. thought it was one of the cows. And when I, yeah. I looked from the side and I saw it duck down. And then, I, so all I saw was maybe the backside of a creature. You know what mm-hmm. I'm talking about? So I don't yeah. claim it as a Bigfoot because I didn't see the face. So I don't know if it was Bigfoot, Dogman. I know that I believe my wife, what she saw, and it looked like a bipedal uh like giant hairy creature i don't that's what she said it was a flat it had a flat face so we don't think it was a dog man but in that area there was a woman that gave us a story i think we covered it what tuesday before last was yeah it, was that and she she it was about rolaine and she was talking about how she had seen this dog man creature a couple times and one time it was chasing a deer and it she's i, I don't know if this thing was able to travel like space and time kind of was bent i don't know how to describe it but her and her friend they described this like curvature that was kind of like the 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 the, the world around it was kind of curved and it jumped up and it clipped the back of the deer's leg and the with the deer either flipped over the fence or i don't remember what yeah i think it flipped over the fence it flipped it flipped over the fence and then this thing leapt over the fence and it was like okay it can do these metaphysical things right but then it's trying to eat yeah exactly that's a good point it's so it's like what the hell so whenever i get caught in the crossfire between you know these camps you know and i tell people look it is a physical thing because they do eat things they they you know i i had a friend of mine on her uh show i was on her show the other night and she had a picture from a guy named mark de leon who's seen these not deer down in uh, uh near robstown near uh corpus christi and he was telling us telling us about it. What's crazy though is he sent me a picture. It was out of Brian Collis Station, and it was a goat. And with one bite, the entire midsection was gone. Now I don't know what kind of animal could take a bite like that. And I have the picture. I'll show. I'll send it to you. It is unbelievable. And so then we we talked to this rancher out in Giddings, and he was talking about this this creature, or whatever. And it's like you said, there's all this land in this Central Texas corridor. And there's people who have owned that land for forever. I'm talking like since the 1880s or 1870s, oh, yeah. and it's never changed hands. And so there's no telling what could be on that land. Now, he says that he's got a hole out there. And that you, that always raises a red flag to me whenever somebody's a rancher or a farmer says, yeah, I got this big hole. you know. And you're like, okay. And then they see some kind of weird creature. And it's like you said, it's synonymous. It goes hand in hand with it. Yes. And then this thing was aggressive and violent. And it took one of his uh, cows, and I mean, I'm talking about a humongous animal, and it just took it and just killed it, took it over its shoulder. It was that big. He said this cow, like several hundred pounds, and it was just carrying it over its shoulder. That's no, insane. That's, that's that's crazy. And yeah, I mean, I don't think people understand the the amount of ranches we have here and the acreage of these ranches. Like on Harryman Road, there's a ranch that stretches uh, about half the length of it. And it's been owned by one family for mm-hmm. generations and generations. And this is the area where I told you the researcher found the T-post that was bent like a banana. Yeah. On the other side of the property is where the, the private ranch is. And no one has access to it. We know that ranch is full of caves and caverns and everything, but no one has had access to it. And when I was filming the uh, expedition, Brushy Creek, the next documentary, I was out there on Harryman Road. Harryman Road had closed after a recent sighting. That's the thing about 2021. Harryman Road had just opened. And then I get a report about something happening off of a trail on Harryman Road, and it shuts down. The whole road was shut down. Mm-hmm. So I went out there with a buddy of mine at night and we're filming on Harryman Road and we're right on the uh, the border of where this ranch is. We can see that we're right by the gate. And as we're there, we're getting pebbles thrown at us. I have it on video and they're coming just from out of the dark. Like there's no explanation for that. There, You can see them flying towards us. Like it's insane. But I would love to get access to that ranch. And I've tried to reach out to those people. But and the other thing is when Harryman Road was named, those people did not want that name, Harry Man no. Road. Mm-mm. They were fighting against it. They were, they were CD folks. Have you heard of the school CD folks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was one of the older people that lived in the area. He was staunchly against the name Harry Man Road. And then in the book, the book I referred to, it says in there, quotation marks, you're treading on holy ground. Don't name it Harry Man Road. They wanted it to be named Bluff Road or something like that. 
Do you remember, and we talked about this now, there was a, there was a flap that had gone on and th- there was a, a picture. I think it looks dogman like it was a video that somebody had taken of a, of a creature that was running through the brush. And I know exactly where it was at, where they where you could see the, 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 the foliage and everything. Uh, it happened in Round Rock. That was several years ago. And there were supposedly two teenagers that took the video. But then there was, a, and now that video made the rounds, whatever. And people have said for years, they tried to debunk it, whatever. I think it moved kind of like a dog man, having seen one. But you all you see is kind of the backside. You don't really see the front side of it. And the way it moves is really weird. And that happened in Round Rock. But then you had... You, now, I, I wanted to leave this to you because you were telling me there was a guy who had footage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, in 2017, there were uh, an abundance of sightings. And also in 2017, there was a guy who posted in one of the neighborhood groups, like people of Round Rock or whatever. He had posted in there several small videos of a tall, lengthy sh- being walking along Brushy Creek Road. Many people saw this, okay? Actually, several people, when I made my research public, people reached out to me saying, hey, talk to this guy. I have the messages. At least five different people said, you need to talk to this guy. So I messaged that guy saying, hey, what's going on? You know, I heard you have this video and, you know, I'd really like to see it. And what are these people talking about? And I have the message. The guy's like, sorry, Eric, that was in 2017. I signed a non-disclosure agreement. I can't talk about it. That's what he told me. And I come to find out that people had told me that he had been raided. And I really didn't believe that. I was like, ah, I'm not really sure about that. But I knew where he lived. And I had a friend that lived in that neighborhood. And I reached out to him. I said, hey, what's this deal with this guy who was supposedly his house got raided? And he said, oh, yeah, he got raided. I remember that. They weren't letting anybody in and out of the neighborhood. That that happened. And they were told it was like, you know, it could have been criminal related or whatever but it happened right after he had posted these videos and i have him saying he signed a non-disclosure agreement he also says that uh, he did take a video and the video does have something in it and that's really all i was able to get out of him and i've been pestering him and pestering him and he just he's not responding to me anymore but along that same time i think i like i said there was a bounty that was 100 mm-hmm. percent real it was that's not disputable in 2017, the FBI, I'm not sure, you know, can I say this? I'm go go sure ahead. I mean, you know, it, it's, it, it is what it is. I mean, it because it's, it is, it's yeah. you know, I mean. It's truth. It's the truth. And yeah. people can look it up and it happened. So the FBI actually put a want, a reward out, a $500,000 reward for any type of information that would lead to the capture of this Bigfoot. That's a fact. It's indisputable. We have the email from the who actually was the head of the FBI in Central Texas emailing the chief of police, hey, we're giving you any assistance you guys need in your hunt for Bigfoot. Not only that, but we're offering a $500,000 reward. Now, Josh, have you ever known the FBI to offer a fake reward? No. Absolutely. They would lose all types of credibility. And that was right after these videos are supposedly surfaced. And the other thing that's weird is that the, 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 Search, all this information came out June 23rd, 2017. Now, if you remember, I talked about the doctor having the encounter in his backyard by the compost area. Mm -hmm. That was on June 23rd, 2017, the same day. The same day the FBI made their bounty public was the same day this was on the BFRO. In the same area. They're talking about the Brushy Creek. It's it's on it's all in the email about the Brushy Creek. Not only that, but remember we're talking about the sighting that took place off of 29? Mm-hmm. That was June 24th, the next day. The next day after the freaking uh, FBI put this bounty out, they had another sighting off of 29 over there. So what, whatever was happening was very real. I believe this person did have those videos. He might have even claimed the reward. Uh, I've I've heard that could be possible. That might be one of the reasons why he doesn't want to talk. I'm, I'm just speculating at this point. But it was a 100% real deal. And this is, we know it came from the head of the FBI because he have, we have his name on there. And when I looked into this guy, it says it on his social media. Not only is he the head of the FBI, but he's in charge of 10 overt and covert secret facilities inside of Texas. This is a fact. It's you can't dispute it. It's a fact. Not only that, but he's in charge of covert information 
So that's some weird stuff right there going on because he's basically admitting to you know, not only having secret information, but to 10 military bases we're unaware of inside of Texas. So <laughs> that just kind of, you know, it adds to all the weirdness circling. We know the bounty is real because that email came out and, a lot of people were saying, oh, it's just a publicity stunt for the local. Well, this isn't local. This is no, federal. This is federal. Man. Yeah. This and and, federal. and it's not, they're not going to do that. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Th- th- there's so much weird. I mean, th- that's what I've been saying. And that's why you were somebody that I just was like, I had a lot of people to interview and you were at the, one of the top of my list. And because after our, con- per our conversation, I was excited because I was like, here's somebody Who's done the research? Yeah. You've done the the, the 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 real boots on the ground, not the bull crap that these patent the boots on the ground, boots on the ground. They're out there by the by, you know their kids' elementary school. No, I'm talking about <laughs> no seriously going out and doing going to places or whatever and talking to these people. Now, somebody mentioned to me uh, earlier today. Actually, they were like, "Well, you don't really do boots on the ground. Where are your videos?" I'm like, "Do I have to videotape every time I go talk to a witness?" Right. That's not what I do. I'm not making if when I when I go to make a documentary, that's what I'm going to do. But that's not what I need to do because a lot of these people too, they don't want they like they work for companies, oh, you know, yeah. like Apple and stuff like that. And you they're not just they're not willing to just uh, you know, say, Hey, you know what, I'm gonna throw my career away or whatever. But th- the thing is, you do, you do that. And I and you you're an invest your background is in investigative journalism and FOIA. <laughs> like you, right, you yeah. you're like the king of the Freedom of Information <laughs> Act. Like you were like, well, I got a FOIA for this, a FOIA for that, you know? Yeah, and, and that's actually, I, so there was a sighting that took place uh, last on September 10th, actually in Harris County. And you can go and look it up. It's on their Harris County's Facebook, Harris County, Marshall, Texas. Okay. And uh, there, they have a, like a little summary of what happened that day. And on the 10th, they say a guy called in, uh, look, reporting, he had a Bigfoot on trail camera. And I was like, what the hell? You know, like that's, that's insane. And uh, we didn't know who that person was. I did a Freedom of Information Act. I got the phone number. I called the guy and I got the photo. That's to me, that's real work right there. I, I mean, you know, I'm not trying yeah. to keep my own home. No, 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 you do. And, and the thing is, and I'm telling you, folks, I'm going to tell you this about Eric. Okay. He does his homework. And the thing that, that really got me, like when we started talking, we were like, you know, just like bang, 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 bang. We were telling each other, you know, all these stories and information that we had gotten from all these people. I have a platform that that, that people come to me and just give they dump it on me. And they're like, here, take this, you know. It, but you you don't have that platform, but you you go out and get these stories because you hustle them up, man. I mean, and that's yeah. impressive if you were to have a platform like that, you know. And that's why I think that promoting your your documentary and then the next one that comes out and then make another one because that. – that is important. Those that is that's the stuff. That's the grassroots boots on the ground, whatever you want to call it. Being in the thick of this and living in this area, and I've talked to—I wouldn't even say hundreds. I'd say thousands of people. And th- at this point, Anthony, is that even safe to say? I'd say thousands. Yeah, definitely thousands. <laughs> thousands of people, and and they're like, "Oh, you're the weird guy that talks about all this," <laughs> you know. <laughs> but the thing is, that's how we get this information to you, and and we do our work, our homework, and we put in the 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 work. And when you put in the work. You get the reward. And to me, the reward is being able to do this, to bring somebody on and talk about this and what your work has done. And 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 also that. Aaron Deese and people like that and David Weatherly, you know, Ken Gerhardt, Lyle Blackburn, the people from Texas, Nick Redfern, who've done all this work in, in this state. Uh, it reinf- reinforces each other's work because we're all on the same path, on the same trail. And it and it, you're, you were correct when you said there's all this talk about – you know, the LBL and the Uton Basin. And I know the people from both of those places and, and they're great guys, I, especially Barton yeah, Nunley, Martin Groves. Those are great guys. Um, but we have our own stuff here, you know, and, and like David Weatherly said, he goes, I'd put the stuff that goes on here in the Hill Country up against any of those other places of high strangeness. And it, I really believe that and I say this with all conviction in my heart, that it has everything to do with the cave system. I think that the Brushy Creek area I finally got someone else that can sit here and verify that, dude, I've been talking about this for years. I'm like, dude, there are Bigfoot, there are Dogman out there, and they are they're following these waterways. They're doing, you know, and everybody's just like, oh, yeah, whatever. And, and dude, no, I wrote a book about this. I, these are all 100% real witnesses I talked to, or Anthony, you were with, with most of them. 
And we interviewed these people. We talked to these people. And I wrote the book. There's a reason, you know, why I wrote the book. I, authors don't make a lot of money. You're not you're not getting rich off your documentary. I'm not getting rich off of books. We we have jobs, you know. But th- this is where you're going to get the real deal, the information, you know. And that's why I was like, dude, I got to get this guy on. I got to record with him. Um, we're going to wrap it up now. But, you know, Eric, it's been a pleasure to sit here and talk to you. Anything closing you want to say, well, like we, in closing? We, got, we still got a lot to talk about, but yeah. we might have to save that for another one. Yeah, because we, no, we've I, gone three yeah. hours already. Yeah, so. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, I, I just appreciate you having me on. And again, there's still a lot of stuff that we haven't even touched base on uh, that we might have to. We'll have to get you on the live time. stream, too, and then we can, you know, we can advertise the, cool, yeah. the, the, the uh, document. You got the other one co- that you're waiting on yeah, to come I'm out? Waiting, Which, yeah, I'm waiting for that one to get dropped. And when that one drops, I... I have the expedition brushy Creek that it's almost ready to go. I'm just kind of buttoning that one up, but yeah, it's, it's really good to hear someone else kind of uh, give an expose about what's going on here because it's real and it's happening in real time. Mm-hmm. You know, these things, they're, they're, they go on They're ancient stuff that's happened here, but there's also modern stuff that's happening, you know, like I said, in real time. And, and that goes to show you, like you said, you'd put it up against the Uden Basin or the LBL. And I agree with you 100%. And we have the data and everything else to, that shows for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and I had somebody that was kind of, I, I get haters and trolls and whatever. And I'm I like, and, and they're mad. Beca- and I'm like, what are you mad for? What, what, because somebody didn't go to you with their story. You know, I, I say this, there's, there's so many stories out there. Everybody has one. I don't care who they are. You can talk to them and they'll be like, well, no, I've never really had anything. Well, there was this one time and Auntie yeah. probably heard that a thousand times. Yeah. And and then they start talking. And the next thing you know, it's like we're in LaGrange. We got the Beefhead Ditch uh, thing or whatever, the Chupacabra. Uh, you know, it just, it all, it's, and then one person will say, well, there's this rancher over here on the other, you know, call him up and, you know, and that's how you get these stories. And it just, it cannot, to me, it cannot be just some amazing coincidence there's just thousands of people out here in Central Texas that just decided to just to talk about weird stuff. I just don't believe that. I think it's, it's because not they're hysteria. Seeing. It's no, real. It's real. It's really happening. And and I just really appreciate the time that people like you put in me too, you know, all of us put into this stuff. And I appreciate you doing what you do. I'm so glad that I I you tried to post in my group. Unfortunately, yeah. I couldn't approve that post because it would have been too controversial. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, yeah. I understand. I, I have no hard feelings, and I'm glad we we got to talk. And we agreed on it. That was no doubt yeah. about that. I just no, knew, no, know you, how people you were, are, you know. And they you just, were right, 100. percent You know your audience better than I do, and I'm glad you reached out. I really am. Yeah, because I, I thought, you know, when I started looking into you, I thought I don't want this guy to post that and then him get attacked and then the, and the, he not understand why right. and they're, they're not understanding I it, him. I meant it in a good way, if that helps. No, no, all. and it was. You were correct. And I agree with you. I do agree with you about that thing. That's something we agree on. But I was like, hey, man, I'm gonna, I'm not approving this. I, and I messaged you, you know. Right. But I said, I, I would like to talk to you. You know, I do, I do think you're on the right path, you know, but it's just – you have to be careful because people, they're so uh, grounded in what they want to believe you're, is real. You're right. Yeah. And a lot of you're times, right. I hate to say it, and it's not all real. You got you to discern what's real and what's not. But it's not really my job as a podcast host to do that. You know, and if people want to believe, they want to believe, that's fine. I don't, I don't try to make you or shove it down your throat. Ah, this is it. Right. But some people have their sacred cows. That's, that's right. And, and yeah. you don't, if you slay them, boy, oh boy. And so you're just like, they don't, you don't want to get their... So I thought, you know, I don't want to turn the audience off when there's this guy that's got a, an, an amazing body of work that you're doing and, yeah, and, and, and so much that you know about history. Um, that's really important too, you know, just to know the, the, what, what you're talking about and, and, and knowing the, uh, the past and how you bring it together to the present. Like you said, now it's happening in real time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's it's awesome. And I hope that these uh, episodes are well-received by the audience. And go, folks, go check out The Beast of Brushy Creek and, and documentary. It's on Amazon Prime, right? It's on Amazon Prime. It's on Tubi. Tubi. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the other one you're, that's coming out. What, 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 what? I'm, I'm waiting for it. It's The Legend of Harry Man Road. If you guys want to see the rough cut, it is on my YouTube. That's the rough cut. Uh, but the official one has been picked up by Amazon. I'm just waiting for them to drop it. So hopefully it drops soon. Yeah. And what is your YouTube channel, Eric? My YouTube channel is Media Palace. Okay. It's kind of my little uh, production that I have. (laughs) 
yeah. and it's guys like you and and to me, Christopher Garitano, um, and Seth Breedlove, and all, all making like documentaries and doing what's what that's what needs to be done. That that is where we're gonna find. And then of course the old guard, the authors that are that are writing books about these creatures and about these things and you know, I'm well, friends you're doing with a big part giving everybody a platform here, Josh, you know, and that's much appreciated. Well, I, I you know what? Sometimes I go, I'm glad to hear you say that. People don't always thank me for that. You know? But <laughs> but you know what? I feel like, you know, you guys are are at, at, on the front lines of this. And and that's I feel like I'm there with you guys and we're all trying to get this information out there. And I tell people all the time, dude, just do your research, man. And and, and Linda Godfrey said it best. She was one of my mentors. She told us on the show, you know, when we recorded with her, me and Tony, and she said, look in your own backyard. Because Tony's oh, like, where yeah. do we go? She's like, start in your own backyard. That's yeah. what she did. She, she, you know, investigative journalism right. in Elkhorn, Wisconsin. And then she wrote The Beast of Bay Road and the rest was history. But same thing you're doing and the same thing you're doing. And I would love to help you in any way I can with any future projects you got. You know, if you want to, you know talk about something, I have any kind of information I can ha- help you with or whatever, uh, let me know. You know? Yeah, I mean, you've already told me some stuff tonight that I really wasn't aware of, and I appreciate that. And I'll definitely call on you when I hear stuff, maybe to double check it, maybe if you've heard it before or not. So Yeah, and I'll, I'll bounce some cases off of you too, because I do that yeah. all the time with the guys in the area, like David Weatherly. Um, that's definitely some Ken Gerhardt, you know, I'll mention something to him, and those guys, uh, they're good to know too. I think that one day we need to go all go and sit and, and eat dinner and hang out and get you get that to would know. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You could get to know these guys because uh, David and me are about to do a project together. I'm going to interview him about all of his uh, state's books. And cool. so, yeah, I've already interviewed him on his Alaska book and that's his best selling one. And I think that, right on. you know, I think we had a lot to do with helping in that. And I, and I, I want to help people, uh, connect, you know, like I, I wish we would have talked before my conference and you could have made it up there to Fort Worth. Yeah, then, I had no idea. Honestly, yeah. I wasn't aware. Yeah. That would have been awesome. And then you could have been there and because your information is incredible. I think you and Garitano would have hit it off because he's a filmmaker like you, man. Check out his work too, Strange World. What is it? Dark Files and Monta Chronicles. Yeah. And I can't I can't wait till your second documentary comes out, Eric. It's been a pleasure, man. I'm gonna uh, run. Folks, remember. Paranormal Roundtable, folks. Check it. Check us out. Um, we're growing by leaps and bounds. We just crossed over twenty eight thousand listeners on YouTube, which is which is cool. That's 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 a another mark, but it's not our ultimate goal. And so, the next milestone, I believe, really will be thirty thousand. That's what we're looking for. And then we're just going to keep going from there. And we started off as a humble little podcast four years ago, and now here we are. But uh, thanks to our guest, Eric Palacios. Uh, Media Palace. Go check him out on YouTube. Check out the rough cut of, of, of his new documentary. Also, uh, check out Beast of Brushing Creek. It's really good. And uh, yeah, so thank you for listening. And you guys, uh, you be safe out there. Good night.